Sun, he knows how to get players from A to B, mentally, physically, emotionally, and obviously create that culture as well. So it's um, it's a good balancing act for a coach. Like, Trent's the best I've, I've found for sure, um, only because he's super intelligent and he knows how to he knows how to speak to players. And he knows how to um, get the best out of them for sure. And you want to play for him, and that's um, that's really important as a coach. I think um, some some coaches are just like, oh, we'll just run hard and good attitude and that sort of thing. It's like it doesn't work sometimes as well, you know. But yeah. I think that's probably the reason why, why the Roosters have been so successful in the recent years, obviously being the first team to go back-to-back since I've parodied it in the 80s. And to know that uh, win the rook, win the game is an advice that all world-class coaches makes me feel like that. Because that means, I mean, basically I've been coached by world-class coaches at amateur level then, so I'll stick that little feather in my cap. Uh, just going to, to, to your debut, like you mentioned, you pretty much said it word for word. A lot of people struggle to remember, but you got everything bang on. 2004 against Manly uh, with some of the legends that you did name. Uh, it wasn't the best debut, though. You did lose 21-10. Uh, just what do you remember about the game itself that day, mate? Um, I remember the first run I had, and Beaver belted me. <laughs> and uh, I still talk about it, because I used to room with him and live across the road from him, obviously, when we, when we played um, at Catalans. And I'm just like, I remember my first run. You drilled me. And, <laughs> and um, uh, also, uh, Walker was phenomenal kicker and he was putting these spiral bombs up and I don't think I dropped one uh, if I can remember correctly but yeah just that sort of the atmosphere and the building up to it and I was definitely ready so I think um, I didn't let myself or my team down but um, yeah looking back on it now it's it's hard to remember the finer details but they're a couple of highlights that's for sure. Going on for the rest of the season, you managed to get three games, um, a win against Parramatta and, and a loss against the Roosters. Um, what do you particularly remember about them games? And as a first season in, in NRL um, at first grade, how, how did you feel it went overall? Yeah, so we, we had a really, really good reserve grade team that year. We went through to the grand final and got beaten by the Roosters. So there was a really good feeling within the club when, you know, when you've got an under 19s team that's going really well, reserve grade team that's going well, first grade team that's going well, it's um, a good feeling in the club. And when I got the opportunity at Manly, um, like I said, um, things that I remember, I think, uh, you know, held my own for sure. And then the game against Parramatta, if I remember rightly, like it was, we had a really young, young team because it might've been around the origin. Cause when origin comes around, it's like, that's when the younger or guys on the fringe get a start because most of the stars are playing. Um, are we still on? What happened to it? Yeah, yeah, we're still there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my screen, man. Wait, <laughs> there we go. Sorry. <clears throat> my bad. Yeah, so, and then we, I think we ended up winning that game because we had Matt Head and a few few guys that steer us around the, um, the park, Daniel Holdsworth. He obviously played over at Salford. He's a good friend of mine as well. And, um, yeah, I think Justin Paul had a really big game as well. So, <clears throat> they're probably names that you know from Super League as well. So, uh, they played really well. And I can't remember, honestly can't remember the, the Roosters game, dude, to tell you the truth. I think it was the cricket game, maybe. The cricket ground. Sydney cricket ground, maybe. Yeah. But uh, that, they had a super... Good team. I think Adrian Morley was playing in that team at that stage, 2004, yeah. Yeah, it will have been. Um, going on into, into the next season, uh, the Dragons finished second in the NRL, so a good season overall. Hornby started the first 10 games um, and they were third to, uh, and then coming back into the last second half of the game, the season, obviously you played a lot more. Um, you were playing at fullback and he got moved to seven and... Um, that must have been a big confidence boost for yourself, playing a lot more regularly and, and with the club performing so well. For sure, man. For sure. So, like I said before, i got to mention Benny because when I was playing reserve grade, like he was playing fullback and I wanted his position and he knew it. And that's what happens. It's like competition. But he spent every week, you know, a couple of times a week, teaching me certain things about the game that he didn't have to. You know, like he... He knew I wanted his position, but still took the time to. And he was my mentor the whole time we were there. Even when he moved into the halves, he mentored me through 
the positional play, where to pop up, where not to, you know, what my strengths were and that sort of thing. And um, when Eddie did get injured, I got my opportunity and I was I was ready for sure at that stage. And um, we had a really, really good team and that was a massive confidence boost, man. Like you said, it's when we had a really good reserve grade team as well and we had a, um, there was just a good system there. I think like Brownie was still a young coach, but uh, we probably didn't achieve as high as what we should have that year. It was the major semi and um, against the Tigers. So, uh, no, that was, yeah, was it 2005? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. It might have been Melbourne one of those two years. But, yeah, I got injured in the in the semi in front of 90,000, I think it was. A, Odd Payton, I think, picked me up and, um, yeah, did my rib cartilage and tried to come back on. I couldn't breathe and, yeah, but... Look, it didn't finish the way that we wanted it to, but that year was phenomenal. Um, and so was the next year. 2006 was fantastic as well. Like, I think I played 15, 2005, um, 15 games, sorry, and then, yeah, 17 games or something, 2006. But yeah, it was um, definitely a phenomenal year for the club and for myself. Definitely. And just coming back to that 2005, obviously, you won seven games in at the end of it, and then the first game of the playoffs was... Uh, a 28-22 win um, against Cronulla at Wynn Stadium. What must that have been like? I imagine the crowd must have been booming, obviously, a, a lot of expectation going into the final series. What was it like to be involved in a game of that sort of stature in, in front of that crowd? Well, Wynn Stadium's very similar to some of the Super League stadiums, man. Like, you know, you've got your, your Suncorps and your um, ANZ, which used to be Telstra. They're these big, big stadiums, sort of like um, Wembley. But uh, wind's very, you're very tight and the crowd's very close. Um, sort of like the new Salford or new St. Helens Stadium. It's um, big-ish, but it's still got that tight feel. And the crowd was phenomenal, man. Like we, you know, home crowd advantage is definitely something that gets overlooked sometimes. But uh, we, if I remember correctly, we, we started really well did all the small things right and, um, you know, just the small things like kicking the corner and chase. Like, it's like, I, it's, oh, that's what you should be doing. Yeah, of course you should be doing it. But when you do it well, consistently, that's wins you those tight games. So, um, yeah, it was – and always Cronulla's not too far away from um, – it's always like that uh, – I don't know, the, what's the best rivalry in the Super League, you reckon? Wigan Saints, maybe? Wigan oh. Saints, yeah. So, oh, it's sort of like that, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well done. Um, so, sort of like that. Uh, you know, they're not too far away in, um, in position. So, it's always a big game, for sure. And they had some fantastic players, too. So, it was, um, it was a good battle. Yeah. Just in my memory, actually. <laughs> Years ago. <laughs> and just uh, coming, you did mention it briefly, but that uh, prelim final against the, the Tigers side that you did unfortunately lose 2021. Uh, 2021, 2012. Um, what do you think could have gone uh, differently in, in the game to have won that? Obviously, I know you mentioned obviously you've injured yourself, but do you feel like as a, as a team you should have won that game or were it just the fact that Tigers were, were just that little bit better? Um, it's one of those games that I do vividly remember, um, to be honest. But when, when, you have, when you do get injured in a game, your emotions are really high um, and... You, your memory sort of can focus around. And I remember the exact tackle, like even though it's a long time ago, like 14 years ago or something, but 15 years ago. But they had, Benji was playing really good footy. They had um, Hodgson who was, um, they kicked really well into the corners and they drove me right back to, to try and get a quick play of the ball. And, um, and they got us off a scrum early and it just depleted us because we, we had done a lot of work on that actual scrum play, and they they skinned it and they they scored. I think Benji scored, and after that, it's sort of you know, there's times in matches where you can just feel if you've programmed for something and you can't pull it off, either in attack or defence, it sort of def deflates you a little bit, and that's definitely what happened. I'm not I'm not saying that that actual play ruined the game for us, but I just remember that vividly, like the the feeling, and then. I got injured and had to reshuffle. Um, and that was obviously another thing, like changing your team, especially your fullback, your, 
your hookers, sorry, your halves and your hooker. Like if you if you have to change that spine at some point and someone comes in, it's it definitely um, shakes the team up. That's for sure. I mean, you said we're testing your memory, mate, but it's all there, mate. You remember it word for word, so it's it's excellent stuff. But moving on to the next season, mate, 2006, you mentioned it briefly, but it brought quite similar fortunes, mate. Um, you started the first three games at fullback, but then came back in um, after round nine, played 18 games overall, seven tries, and you finished in sixth place. And But more importantly, another playoff series, mate. Uh, looking at this playoff series, we're, we're monumental. You started... You played away at Brisbane and beat them 20 points to four. 50,000 fans at Suncorp, mate. But more, but just looking at this Brisbane side, mate, I'll read out a few names. You've got Darius Boyd, Justin Hodges, Brent Tate, um, Staggs, Lockyer, Perry, Webke, Berrigan, Sivan Asiva, Thayde, Thorne, Carroll. With, with people like Corey Parker and Ben Hannett on the bench, going up there, mate, 20 points to four, and they, they eventually won the grand final that year. And, and you even scored a try yourself. Do, do you remember much about mm. that, Graham? Yeah, I do. I, I remember the crowd was so loud. <laughs> it's probably the loudest crowd that I've ever played, um, played for. But um, I remember Wes Nguyenwa had a really good game that game, and um, I think he set me up for that try, if I remember correctly. And... We had a really good game, I think, the, the game before, and just we trained well um, going into it, and we were just really confident, um, if, yeah, if I remember correctly. But obviously the season didn't end up like we'd like to, but that game, I remember a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. And I think, was it the week after that we might have played Manly, maybe? I'm not too sure. Um, and then we beat them. And I remember getting interviewed after that game and they said, oh, you know, what what happened, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, we just, it was grind out. That's all we did. Like, we just did all those simple 1% things. And it's such a cliche and it's so boring when people talk about it. It's like when you hear someone get interviewed and they're like, yeah, we just, just grind it out and do the 1% things. It's like, yeah, but that's what wins your big games, you know, when your percentage and win, win the play the balls, both in attack and defence and, so boring, but it's that's, that's what happens, that's, you know. And then obviously you've got some some stars scoring some fantastic tries, of course. But um, yeah, then we went into Melbourne, I think. Was that the yeah Melbourne? And they were phenomenal. We were a little bit off pace, and yeah, I got injured relatively early. I broke my ankle and tried to keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's just syndesmosis. I don't know if you know what that is, where you just separate the bones here and yeah, ankles and had a little crack as well. And I went off and probably shouldn't tell your fans this, but um, got needled and tried to go back on and play and ran around limping. And yeah. But um, it was, it seemed both the, the 2005, 2006 for myself personally, like individually, it, that's what happened. Like I went out and it was very disappointing. One, because I don't like going off the field during the game, but two, we lost the game as well to get into the grand final. So I think we had the team to do it for sure. Man, you look at our team, you know, I'm very proud to, to say that I played with some of those guys. And, you know, some of them are still my good friends now, but man, like you won't get a team like that um, too often. Obviously there's you know, Melbourne and some of the teams now for sure. I think looking at that Dragon setup as well, they were all coming through the academy. You know, your, your Barretts, your, your Timmins, your Head, your, yourself mm. and, and whatnot. So it's, it's really impressive to see that conveyor belt as well. Um, oh, like you said, you beat Manly 28-0 and then ended up losing to, to Melbourne. Um, and then that, that was your time up at the St. George Dragons, mate, St. George Illawarra Dragons. Um, was it Mick Potter that took you over to Catalan or was it someone else who, who spotted you as well? Look, Mick, Mick took me to Saints from, from Tigers. Um, we played a major semi against them in reserve grade for when I was playing the Tigers. And I think I scored a hat trick or something. And then he just rang me up that next week and just said, look, come to Saints. And then from then, and then he, he took me as a 5'8 and then moved me to fullback and just was a really, really good mentor and coach. Um, and when I was ringing him, I think at the end of 2006 season, and I was at a certain point there where I'd played two really good 
seasons and um, I was on okay money, but I I thought it was a more 